The idea of six degrees of separation, that you can take almost any two people in the world, and one will know someone who knows someone, who knows someone who knows someone, who knows someone who knows the other, has moved to the front of the public consciousness in the nearly a century since it was first written about. In 1994, three bored college students decided to make a game that would go on to be called Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, and the idea is that if you take any actor, the number of steps you have to take to reach actor Kevin Bacon is that actor's Bacon number. So if you are Kevin Bacon, your Bacon number is zero. If you're not Kevin Bacon but you've worked with him in a film, your Bacon number is one. And if you don't have a Bacon number of zero or one, but you've worked with someone who has a Bacon number of one, then your Bacon number is two, and so on. Similar metrics have been devised for co-authoring a paper with mathematician Paul Erdos, playing chess against 19th century chess player Paul Morphy, or playing alongside the rock band Black Sabbath. However, I haven't found anyone tracking connectedness in YouTube collaborations in the same way. And if you want something done, well, you just have to do it yourself. Chapter 1 Scott Numbers. So, as you may have guessed from the title of this video, I am going to be tracking how many steps it takes to get from a given YouTuber to the science communicator and also a YouTuber, Tom Scott. So, any YouTuber who has collaborated on a YouTube video with Tom Scott has a Scott number of 1. And if you've collaborated with someone with a Scott number, your Scott number is 1 higher than theirs if it's not already the same or lower than theirs. I'm going to be looking at some YouTubers with some low numbers, seeing if I can get some essentially arbitrarily chosen YouTubers at all, and then talking about what all of these numbers actually mean and why you, the viewer, should care about this. First, definitions of basically all the words in the phrase YouTuber who has collaborated on a YouTube video with Tom Scott, because I want to be consistent with what I mean here. A YouTuber is a person who possesses their own or the group YouTube channel, which is in some sense theirs even if they share it with someone else, which isn't just the channel of a business or the automatic channel that music releases get posted on, in which they make made for YouTube or at least partially made for YouTube content of some kind. So this includes YouTube based cover band members, but not just people with an automated music channel that posts all their releases to YouTube, and not people who happen to be in something that made its way to YouTube. I considered specifying that they have to be an adult, but instead I'm going to say they have to be someone who appears in YouTube videos of the reasonable free will that can be expected of a teenager who's often doing their own thing, but not of just some kid who appears on a family channel. Has, for this video, means had on the 3rd of September 2021, because video production and editing is not instantaneous, but if you want to talk about Scott numbers in the future, obviously they will change over time. Collaborated on, in this case, means that both of the YouTubers in question intentionally appeared, either vocally or visually, in the video at some point, or an animation they made ended up in the video, and the recording of them doing so was made for that video. This means I'm specifically discounting reaction or response videos. A YouTube video means a video that was made for YouTube and not one that just ended up there, whether by being re-uploaded later by its own creators or by people who pirated it. The video also needs to be public and not private or unlisted. For this video, I'm also discounting YouTube Rewind because those are a little bit too forced. Like, we care about people who intentionally work together on something, and not just people who were bundled into a group of a hundred or so people and told to dance. If you do want to count them, then just add everyone who has ever participated in any of them to the Scott number of two list, except for, and I'm not joking, Rebecca Black, who was the only YouTuber who made content specifically for the 2011 Rewind. And finally, Tom Scott means uh, Tom Scott, the science communicator, not the musician or anyone else named Tom Scott. For a quick example, Mia Mulder, who worked with Tom Scott on his Nebula original series Money, has collaborated with Tom in one of his videos, but not in a YouTube video. 
she's appeared in a YouTube video with him because he added an advert about his Nebula series to the end of some of his videos, but she did not collaborate with him on a YouTube video because she didn't make that content for that YouTube video, so she doesn't have a Scott number of one. As a quick aside, she manages to get three with one step to Natalie Wynn of ContraPoints, then one step to Harry Bruce of H Bomber Guy, then one step to Tom Scott. The reason I chose Tom Scott in specific is partly because he collaborates with a lot of people from a lot of different spheres of YouTube, so he makes a perfect hub for all of YouTube to be linked through. Partly because he's a relatively unproblematic person, so I don't feel bad signal boosting him if this video suddenly blows up out of nowhere. The, the sum total of all the drama I can recall him ever getting into is that he once made some inappropriate jokes about Chilean history, got told that they were offensive, and apologised, and then everyone moved on. Finally, he's just relatively easy to research and find out a relatively definitive list of all the people who've worked with him, particularly since he produces high effort, low duration videos, which means there's a fairly low amount of time I need to check to see who's collaborated with him. Also, I just want to say I'm not in any way doing this for Tom Scott. We don't know each other and he doesn't even know I'm doing this. Chapter 2. Some quick lists to start with. I want to preface this by saying that I am going to mention literal hundreds of YouTubers in this video, but this does not mean that I either endorse or condemn them. I don't even know who most of them are. In the unlikely case that this video blows up, don't go about harassing any of them, please. With that said, here's the list of every YouTuber that I can find with a Scott number of 1 and the name of their channel, if it isn't just their name, in the forwards chronological order in which they appeared on his main channel, then on the Matt and Tom channel if they didn't appear on the main channel, then on any other channel, including their own, if they didn't appear on either of the first two. Jay Foreman from Matt Men, Matt Gray from Matt and Tom as well as his own channel, Matt Parker from Stand Up Maths, Mark Norman Norm Francis, James Grime from Singing Banana, Colin Furs, Robert Llewellyn from Fully Charged, Emma Blackery, Stephen Bridges, David J. Bodica, Katie Steckles, Hannah Nicklin, Sally LePage, Chase from Science C, Inés Dawson from Draw Curiosity, Steve Mould, Grady Hillhouse, Amy Taytill from Vintage Space, Alex from Play the Mind, Alex from Technicality Studios, Jenny from Active Galactic, Melissa from Active Galactic, Vicky Pointer, Twelve Tone, who only seems to go by Twelve Tone online, Evan Hadfield from Rare Birth, Steve Randall, Barry Lewis, Simon Clark, Jeff Marshall from All the Stations as well as his own channel, Vicky Pipe from All the Stations, Lizzie from LD Shadow Lady, Joel from Smallish Beans, Dan Hardcastle from Nerd Cubed, Dodie from Doddle, Thorheen Francis from Medlife Crisis, Jade Tan Holmes from Up and Atom, Curtis Bouter, Ali from Neurotransmissions, Micah from Neurotransmissions, Evan Gregory from Shmoyoho, Andrew Gregory from Shmoyoho, Michael Gregory from Shmoyoho, William Osman, Michael Reeves, Luke Cutford, Evan Edinger, Taha Khan from Answer in Progress as well as his own channel, Saf from Super Saf, Lucy Bella Earl from English with Lucy, Hannah Witten, M Ford from My Pale Skin, Reb Day, Daniel J. Layton, Sammy Paul, Stuart Ashen from Ashens, Toby from Birdkeeper Toby, Alex Alamvi from Brainbird, Tom Carroll, Seb Lee Delar, Leonard French from Lawful Masses with Leonard French, Devin Stone from Legal Eagle, Jack Douglas from Jack's Films, Jaden from Jaden Animations, Alan Rose from McNally Rose, Hank Green from Flub Brothers, Alec from Technology Connections, Aaron from Mr. Who's the Boss, Vanessa from Braincraft, Katie Morton, Jarvis Johnson, Chloe Dungate from Scarf Demon, Tom Bridgewell from Tom. Oscar, William Marler, Trace Domingraz, James from Atomic Frontier, Jordan Harrod, Mehdi Sadagdar from Electroboom, Sabrina Cruz from Answer in Progress, Harry Bruce from H Bomega, Jimmy Donaldson from Mr. Beast and Mr. Beast Gaming, Chelsea from Cheap Holiday Expert, Ven Weichman from Corridor and Corridor Cast, Bradley Friesen, David from Minute Earth, Grant from Three Blue One Brown, Diana from Physics Girl, The Team from Osmosis, The Team from SciShow, Mithuna from Looking Last Universe, Stephen from Welch Labs, Patrick from Tearzoo, Jabril from Jabrils, Danielle from Anima Logic, Joe from It's Okay to Be Smart, Sam Rogers, Mark Rober, Kevin Lee, Lieber from Vsauce 2, Thomas Dea from Yes Theory, Don Burgess, Stefan Milo, Hugh James, Andrew Steele, Patrick Kelly from Corporis, Alex Danis, Sophie Ward from Soap's Notes, David Ian Howe, Chase Pipkin from Freethink, 
that's 107 people. And I'm not certain that I've even got all of them. I'm not listing every YouTuber with a Scott number of two, but more famous ones include Felix Kjellberg, better known as PewDiePie, who has worked with Mr. Beast, Sean McLaughlin of Jap Jacksepticeye, who has worked with Mr. Beast, Clay from Dream, a Minecraft YouTuber best known for accidentally cheating at Minecraft, who has of course worked with Mr. Beast. Dave from Boyna Band, who has worked with Jaden Animations and Emma Blackery, Josiah Brooks from Draw with Jazza, who has worked with Jaden Animations, and this incidentally means that because of Jazza's brother Shad, I can hit historical weapons YouTube in three moves, Robert Rallison of The Odd Ones Out, who has worked with Jaden Animations, most of Left Wing YouTube who have worked with H Bomber Guy, which means I can get to the extremely controversial Ian Kaczynski of Vouch in three steps, and most of the rest of political YouTube in four or five, Tessa Violet, who has worked with Dodie, Logan Paul, who has worked with the Corridor cast, Jimmy Wong from the Command Zone, who has worked with the Corridor cast, Joel from the Me Official, who has worked with Jaden Animations. Look, I can do this for a while. Even arbitrarily removing YouTube Rewind, which is my best shot at this, I can get a huge fraction of YouTubers in very few steps. But this only proves that there are a lot of YouTubers with connection to Tom Scott. Not all, or even most of them. So what about connecting some more people? Chapter 3, Arbitrary Connections. Next I decided to grab some random YouTubers and see how quickly I can get from them to Tom Scott, a little bit like the semi-popular Wikipedia game Wickington Crescent. By random, I don't want to mean completely random, but I wanted to pick a random popular YouTuber, and there's a fairly reasonable approximation for popularity that I can also use as a random list. Anyone who has an entry in Wikipedia's list of YouTubers was counted here. So the first person I got on my randomised list was Tommy Innit, who has worked with Mr. Beast, and also a bunch of the other people I've mentioned. Maybe I should have started with Mr. Beast instead of Tom Scott? The second person on my list was Sandy Saha, who has worked with Nalanjala Dar and apparently no other YouTubers, and Nalanjala Dar hasn't worked with anyone else either. Uh, that's one way you can fail to reach this main group of YouTubers, just having a very small group of people who you've worked with. However, the next person I randomly turned up I did manage, though he proved a challenge. I rolled up Harley Movenstein, who I had never heard of. He does a bunch of videos about other YouTubers, but very rarely features them, except one time when he featured Verb, who is a mostly trend-following YouTuber who once worked with Gabby Hanna. Gabby Hanna has worked with Dr. Mike, who has worked with Devin Stone of Legal Eagle, who has worked with Tom Scott, giving Movenstein a Scott number of, at most, five. Next, I rolled up Sean Plot, better known as Day9, who appeared on an episode of Game Nights alongside Jimmy Wong, giving him a Scott number of three. Next is Connor Colquhoun, also known as Sea Dog VA, who is based in Japan and makes videos about it, but anyway, he's worked with the anime man who has worked with PewDiePie, giving Sea Dog a Scott number of four. Next on the list, I literally rolled PewDiePie's wife, so I'm just going to assume that she has a Scott number of three, one higher than his. Then I rolled Tessa Violet, who I mentioned in the two list, ContraPoints, who I mentioned in the two list, then John Mitsewich of Food Wishes, who doesn't seem to have worked with anyone, Ben Going of Bohem, who doesn't seem to have worked with anyone. Roughly speaking, this is a list of people who can either be connected to Tom Scott in a few moves, or can be connected to few or no people at all. Even outside of the list on Wikipedia, there are plenty of people who you may very well have heard of who can be traced to Tom Scott. Just a few I noticed were missing from the page were most of the music side of YouTube. Cover artists like Black Griffin, who's worked with Rumi Official, Peter Hollands, who's worked with Rumi Official, Nate Wants to Battle, who's worked with Rumi, Caleb Hiles and Jonathan Young, who've worked with Nate Wants to Battle, all fall well short of the hypothetical six degrees, and so do music theory channels like Andrew Huang, who has naturally worked with Rumi, as well as Dave from Boy and a Band, just in case they need another way of getting to Scott number of three. Let's get political. I mentioned that I can usually get to the left-wing side of the political YouTube in one, two, or three moves, but it turns out I can also get to the right-wing side in just three moves too, as Sargon of Akkad, the, the, the YouTuber, not the actual Akkadian warlord, has worked with Destiny, who has worked with H Bomber Guy. If you don't think Sargon counts, fair enough, I'm not going to argue too much, but Destiny also just debated Lauren Southern, a right-wing political YouTuber and the owner of a Scott number of three. 
Another way of reaching the right wing side of YouTube, this way in four moves, is via the massive debates that Vouch takes part in, which will usually catch a variety of right wing YouTubers in his net. One thing that Tom Scott himself has said was that he doesn't have any contacts in common with beauty and makeup YouTube, which makes sense, the only person he's collaborated with from makeup YouTube hasn't posted new videos in a year, and she's not a massive collaborator. So maybe I can find some makeup YouTubers that Tom can get in touch with. I literally just searched for YouTube makeup tutorials and decided to see what I got and landed on James Charles, who has worked with PewDiePie. He's also very cancelled and maybe we don't want to associate with him too closely. He's also worked with Nikki Tutorials, who's the second person I found by searching for YouTube makeup tutorials, and she gets a Scott number of four. And so does Jeffree Star, who has also worked with James Charles and is also controversial. I could go through every section of YouTube if I wanted to and see what happens, but here's the roughly accurate version. Within one, two, or occasionally three steps, you get to someone who acts as a sort of hub, a nexus in their own sphere of YouTube, and sometimes even more than that. Mr. Beast is someone who I could have chosen as easily as Tom Scott, the main nexus, and is one step away. PewDiePie is two steps away, and the video on how easy it is to get from PewDiePie to basically anywhere on YouTube has already been made. Rumi, Vouch, and James Charles all similarly act as a central figure where you can reach them with a couple of steps. If you do music, you probably know a guy who knows a guy who knows Rumi. Chapter 4. Limitations this is going to be a quick chapter as there's not much to say about it, but there are three types of YouTubers who won't generally make it to Tom Scott. Channels which aren't in English usually don't make it, although there are a few, such as iMori, who speak English but choose not to produce their content in English, who might work with a primarily English-speaking creator and then end up reaching Tom Scott. Next, YouTubers in very insular communities will occasionally fail to reach him just because they haven't expanded enough to run to the main group, but reaching him is basically inevitable if you do enough collaborations, which brings me to the third group. People who just don't collaborate often or at all, or carefully manage who they do and don't collaborate with to deliberately avoid hitting any of this massive group of YouTubers. Chapter 5. Practical Applications Okay, so this is neat and all, but what's the point of this? Well, there's a few threads I want to address. One, as I just discussed, people who don't speak English are disproportionately likely to be far away from Tom Scott if they even reach him at all. People of colour are also fairly badly underrepresented, and while the list isn't as badly skewed towards men as it could have been, it's still fairly skewed towards men. Obviously, picking an English-speaking white man as a starting point is fairly likely to produce this kind of skew, but as I check people of colour on the list of YouTubers rather than just anyone on the list, it quickly became clear that they were just less likely to reach Tom Scott at all. And when they did, it was usually in more steps than it took for other YouTubers. Sure, there's a few who've worked with Tom Scott himself, and a few who've worked with people who've worked with him, but as a general rule, people of colour are less likely to be in the in-group that most of YouTube's content can be traced to, making it harder for them to get a hand up in the YouTube world. With white English-speaking creators, I usually found myself stumbling into connections that led back to the central group, but with people of colour, a lot of the time I was struggling to get even close. So in general, this kind of insular YouTube network tends to disadvantage the same sorts of people that, you know, most things tend to disadvantage. Although, because left-wing YouTube is right next to Tom Scott, this is less true of LGBTQIAIP plus people than it might otherwise have been. This also means that a lot of the content on YouTube is basically controlled by an in-group of sorts. If you're associated with one of these people, you're probably on the path to success, and if you're not, you might find things a lot tougher. This is also the only large group of YouTubers I can find, although I haven't looked too hard at that one. In general, this also goes to show that YouTube is just really connected. Who would have thought that cover artists would have a connection to swordsmen or animated to political commentators? The problem, of course, is when it all comes crashing down. Uh, content warning for Twitter doing the Twitter thing, the timestamp for the next chapter is in the down there bit. A lot of people I mentioned today are cancelled for one reason or another. I'm not going to touch the justifications for why they're cancelled with an 11 foot pole because this video is not about dissecting the reasons for why, but as far as I can tell, at least most of them are at least mostly legitimate reasons to be upset or expect an apology followed by changed behaviour. 
albeit not a reason for the kind of trashing that usually takes place. However, there's one thing I will say. Guilt by association is really, really stupid. One of the things I've seen is that when it turns out that someone did something bad, everyone who's associated with them also takes a hit. Partly a financial hit, partly a hit to their mental health from, you know, Twitter. This often happens before they've even had a chance to respond. And if you redraw the map, so that instead of the number of steps from Tom Scott, it's the number of steps from anyone who's ever done something deeply problematic. If you want to say these people have had their chance, they've flown it, they're completely irredeemable, then fine, you do you. But if anyone who worked with them is cancelled too, and if anyone works with a cancelled person is cancelled, then by a very strange kind of induction, a lot of YouTubers cancelled. And a lot of the time, the trashing doesn't start because you worked with this person knowing they did something bad. It's because you worked with this person even before they did something bad. Or in one case, you worked with someone on the same project as someone else who did something bad, but none of you knew who else was working with them. I can hardly imagine, and definitely don't want to imagine, what it's like to log onto social media and see hundreds of people demanding an explanation for something that you don't know has happened yet. Tom Scott may be almost entirely unproblematic, and he may associate with almost entirely unproblematic people, but I wonder what happens when the guilt by association goes an extra step. Something that has, by the way, already happened. If someone does something wrong, at the very least give everyone around them time to breathe before crashing down on them, asking them to make statements about what happened. Chapter 6. Conclusions This mostly started as a fun thought experiment, but there's definitely a serious side to it. I think it's fair to say that it can be both fun and serious. It's interesting to see who's connected to whom and how closely, but it's also important to realise that there's another side to it. I think it's healthy for YouTube to be so connected, but I don't think it's so healthy for that connected group to be mostly of majority demographics, while other people are mostly forced to struggle on alone. YouTube, of course, is already getting more connected. By the time this video makes it to your screen, the list of people with Scott number one is already out of date, since tomorrow, at the time of writing, Tom Scott is interviewing someone on his second channel, and I don't know who that is yet. And as more and more people are added to the list, the web gets ever tighter, and maybe it will end up reaching further too. I have once again reached the point where I've written thousands of words of script, so I should probably stop here. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, watch more of my incredibly high production value content, share it with some friends, and hey, see if you can get this video to some of the people I mentioned in it.